Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Gunpla Re Review. I'm Spicy Bill and today I want to talk about the Ifrits. So these are the high grade universal sentry uh, Ifrits. Basically the Ifrit is a melee mobile suit and up until Gundam Unicorn this thing is uh, considered a mobile suit variation. So it could be canon or it could be non-canon because uh, all these, uh, all every version of the Ifrit or feature uh, not feature in the original series like they're either feature in the video games or you know uh, like the blue destiny the e free kai or uh, i guess in mangas or you know various other side stories so apparently there's only eight version of the uh, e free uh well eight units made so uh we got a couple mass production versions i'm assuming there's uh you know there's three customized units you have the E Free Custom, we have the E Free Schneid, and then you have the uh, E Free Knocked. And uh, yeah, so this I guess there's five uh, mass production units like like this one right here. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the uh, uh, the mass production type. And you know what's really sad about uh, E Free? It's it's a very nice suit, except only one of them has been a retail release. So only the E3 Shinai has been a retail release. Every single other E3 has been a premium bundle kit. So if you, you know, if you're living in North America or outside of areas where countries that have, uh, you know, that has the premium bundle web shop available to you, uh, you're going to be paying a lot of money for these kits. So yeah, I end up getting every single one because I actually like the E3 a lot. So I had to pay big money for it. It's unfortunate. So anyway, here we have it. Here's the uh, MS08TX, the E3. And I also uh, put on uh, special decals for uh, this kit as well. Uh, if you've seen my previous custom video, uh, I put a bunch of decals on the uh, E3 Schneid. And yeah, I added extra decals on it. So I will talk about that when I talk about this kit. Okay, so this is the E3 mass production type. So this is the base unit, and uh, every other vari uh, every other variant is uh, you know use uh, this frame as the base. <coughs> so you can see that it's got these uh, very nice looking uh, spike pauldrons. Obviously, very uh, goof inspired. Now this one uh, does reuse the uh, shotgun from the camphor. So. Yeah, it's uh it's a little weird why they uh, went the lazy route and reuse a weapon from the old kit. And you can store the shotgun back here if you like. <laughs> and it also uses the old hands from the camper because of the handles. So it's very weird, you know. Uh the hands aren't even the same size. So that's a little bit disappointing. So you know what, we're just not even gonna bother with that. It does have the heat sword, but I can't find a heat sword. Uh, you know, no. What what happened to a lot of my uh, kits is that I lend out to my friend who does like stop motion uh, with model kits, and sometimes uh, stuff gets lost. And I had to go to his place and you know dig through like piles and piles of uh, props in order to uh, get to my stuff. So I'm probably not gonna do that again. I, I wasn't very well compensated for like you know lending out my stuff. And by the time when I get the stuff back, you know, the condition, uh, it's just not how I, you know, originally, uh, you know, w when I lend it to the people that does this kind of stuff. Obviously, it goes through multiple hands, you know, because it's a company that does, like, you know, production stuff. So, yeah, I don't know who's, like, touching my stuff and who's, you know, doing what to it. So, I'm not interested in doing that anymore. So, anyway... Uh, yeah, I got put on a couple decals on this kit. Got uh, some decals on the legs. Got some decals on the side skirt, front skirt. Uh, put on the decal right here. And so it says like e -freak. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty cool. Also put on uh, some of these, uh, I guess, rank. I think this might have something to do with rank for Neo Young. I don't know. <laughs> so got these uh, one... Uh, one set of wings and this one has like three of them so I guess this the Schneid is a higher rank also some decals on the head one decal here on the shoulder yeah okay so let's talk about articulation here oh well, first off uh, these are full stickers and they are absolutely terrible 
uh, we have a ball joint here for uh, we have a hinge that goes into the ball joint so the feet is on the ball joint and then there's a hinge obviously we have the double jointed knee which is very nice and uh, believe it or not the E3 is one of the first uh, Gundam Revolution projects so it's got uh, new and improved uh, shoulder joints we'll talk about that soon we have the slide cut we have the universal joint for the hips. It is very hindered because you can't do anything with the side skirt. The side skirt are completely blocked off by these power cables. And same thing, uh, the power cables on the uh, backpack hinders the uh, side to side articulation. Uh, we do have an app crunch, but again, very hindered. Uh, maybe this is why the E3 just didn't sell very well because of the. Uh, uh, the, the way these power cables are like just getting uh, just preventing stuff from moving around now what's really nice is these are uh, new style uh, Gundam Evolution style shoulder joints you can you know you can pull it out and then get increased points of articulation and you also have the swing up gimmick so you can bring the up arm a little, quite a bit actually yeah can do that but uh, really doesn't do anything for me to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, the pauldron can move out like that. It's just another uh, attachment point right there in the shoulder. And we have the uh, bicep swivel. And we have the double jointed elbow. Uh, yeah, much a uh, lot more than 90 degrees, but it can't, it's not like a complete double jointed elbow. It, it gets stuck uh, at certain points. Okay, and obviously the hand is on a ball joint. The ball joint going to this, uh, just the socket. There's no poly cap in there. It's just held in there by friction from the collar. So that's actually quite interesting. Now you can adjust the motor eye on this kit. Uh, I think Bandai just made it better with the uh, kits after the E3 Shinai. The E3 Shinai, the motor eye would just move around like crazy. But with the, uh, uh, the other, with the E3 Kai, they fixed that problem. And same with the E3 knocked. So, yeah, uh, you can stick something in there to move the mono eye if you like, or you can pop the head off and then adjust it via the switch. Uh, it, it's a pain in the butt to pop the head off, so I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, and that is pretty much it for the E3 mass production type. Uh, this is still one of my favorite kits. You know, if this thing was not a premium Bandai, I would probably get like two or three of these guys, probably five of them. So I can complete my E3 collection and just label them 1 to 5. Yeah, but unfortunately this thing is premium Bandai and I'm very disappointed with Bandai for doing this. <laughs> I was hoping, you know, uh, at least one of them besides the Shinai would have been mass produced, you know, retail. But nope, they had to make them all premium Bandai. Uh, it's probably because of this gimmick, uh, the, the power cable thing is not very well designed. I think what they could have done is uh, maybe like just have the power cables, you know, like maybe have two power cables or something like that. One attached to the backpack and one attached to the waist and just make it look like it's going connected together, something like that. Just an idea, but oh well, it's too late now. All right. Next off, we have the uh, E3 Schnei. Now, it has the same exact articulation, and the problem with the Moto I, it does move around. Uh, it, it moves very easily, so it's very loose. So when you move the kit, uh, the Moto I probably going to move. So that's very annoying. That's one of the biggest flaws with this kit. Uh, almost every reviewer on YouTube has complained about it. Uh, it is a very nice looking kit though, although uh, you also have some problem with these uh, heat darts coming off, especially on the back skirt. These things would just not stay together. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, the side skirt moves, right? The way this thing is attached like that, it clashes with the side skirt. So when you move the leg, the side skirt is going to push off the, uh, the heat dart on the back. So that's very annoying. Okay, so what I did here is I added some more decals on the legs, you know, decals on the side skirts, Xeon symbol, right there, so, you know, we know Xeon. We'll add it some more, uh, I guess, rank-related uh, emblems on the chest section. Some more water slides on the shoulder, you know, just make it look more interesting, like that. And, I th yeah, and some more uh, on the side skirts. 
So overall, I, I really like the way these uh, turn out. I also have the E3 knocked and the E3 uh, custom. Probably uh, trying to get them back when I'm uh, when the people are done doing their uh, you know their stop motions uh, for Gundam or whatever it is that they're doing with these kits that I lend to them. And uh, once I get them back, I'll do like a second part for uh, you know second video on the E3 and probably have them all together. Uh, I think this is my plan. I'm gonna have I'm ha gonna have all my these ifries uh, display in my detox. That would be nice. Okay, and that's pretty much it. These are the uh, High Green Universal Century ifries, and let me know what you guys think about these guys. Thanks for watching.